Maybe you got tired of all black finishes and you want to spice things up with a gorgeous figured top. I've already showed you this Gibson Les Paul custom figure, but you don't have to sell a kidney to get a cool top like this. I got something cool for you today, guys. The Epiphone Les Paul Modern in the beautiful Cafe Latte Fade finish. And look at that, it has a figured top. I can't wait to check this one out. excited for Metallica's new album coming next year. But on to the matter at hand. Once again we venture into Epiphone's official website looking for the Les Paul Modern. Where could it be? Original Les Paul maybe? Nah. Modern Les Paul? Nah, that's too obvious. Of course it's in the modern Les Paul you guys, come on. Here it is. We got all sorts of cool stuff including the Les Paul Modern that I'm gonna show you in a second. The Les Paul Muse which I reviewed in two colors and they are side by side which is pretty cool because I'm gonna draw a lot of comparison between these two models in my review. Then there are the power players introduced earlier this year. These are mainly aimed towards kids and new players but I wanna give them a go anyway. I mean I still buy a lot of Legos. The Studio E1 that I'm gonna review for you guys in a natural color. The Les Paul Prophecies I got two videos on those. Ooh and check it out. Les Paul Modern Vintage Sparkling Burgundy. I'm not entirely sure what the classic worn is doing here in the Modern series but maybe it's because of the cool new finishes. Anyway, I'm gonna review the Melody Maker E1 as well in a cool color so look forward to that. And maybe I'll do the Slash Les Paul special too soon. But now back to the Les Paul Modern figure and here it is. It comes in three gorgeous finishes in the official website, Magma Orange Fade and this gorgeous Caribbean blue fade that I'm gonna try and order and review for you guys. And I'm gonna do it as soon as this gorgeous cafe latte fade sells. Which I don't think it's gonna take too long because the holidays are coming and I mean just look at it. It is a pretty unique fade that combines really well with the figured maple veneer. That has got to be one of the cleanest looks on a Les Paul that I've seen lately. I mean check out that gorgeous bastard. It's not exactly a flame maple, I mean the flame on it, it's not dancing too much on the light, but it's still visible and it's pretty cool. I gotta compliment the guys at the Epiphone factory for doing the Cafe Latte Fade so well. Even though I can't say that this finish is gonna be to everybody's liking, but I certainly don't think somebody is gonna hate it. Just look at those cool clear top hats. Also they have a pretty cool feature that I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys a little bit later that helps with the three push pull posts that the modern has. And here's the cool thing, even though it's a full thickness body, it is seriously weight relieved and it's only 200 grams more than the Les Paul Muse which has the thinner body. So it's not gonna break your back at around 7.5 pounds and you're gonna be looking cool when playing standing up with it. And look what we have here, probably one of my favorite features in the Les Paul modern it has an ebony fingerboard, actual ebony fingerboard. And I think it's the perfect color, it's not the darkest or the lightest that I've seen. Combine that with the fact that it's part of the Inspired by Gibson collection with the Kalamazoo Epiphone headstock and you got yourself a pretty good guitar. As part of the Inspired by Gibson collection it has the Gibson electronics in the back as well which is pretty cool. This is rightfully called the Les Paul Modern. It is weight relief, it has the asymmetrical neck profile, it has a cool high fret axis colorway near the neck joint. The medium jumbo frets don't get in the way of your playing and don't mess with the intonation. Honestly considering the price of the Les Paul Modern, I can't think of a single flaw in this particular guitar. It all comes down to personal preference about specs and looks. Now let's see if this beauty is just skin deep. Even though this is a brand new guitar, it was made in January of 2022, we are now almost at December 2022, so this could benefit from some fret polish, so I'm gonna polish these frets with Frying by Music Nomad and oil the fingerboard with F1 oil. 
I'm trying to build a database with these videos because usually official listings disappear in the websites. So I'm gonna save this one as well by going through the specs, starting with the body, neck, there is the hardware, electronics, and the rest. This way, if the official listing disappears from the website, we'll still have it. Now let's go through the specs in person. I've counted at least three pieces of mahogany for the back. Two piece plain maple top with a two piece figured maple veneer. A glued in or set neck construction with a mahogany neck, multiple piece. Ebony fingerboard, which is pretty cool for this one. 22 medium jumbo frets, 12 inch radius, 24.75 inch scale length. Then on the headstock we have Grover Rotomatic Locking Tuners, Kalamazoo headstock for the inspired by Gibson Epiphones, Graftech New Bone Nut and a set of Pro Bucker pickups, Pro Bucker 2 and 3. Let me explain the controls before I measure the pickups. First of all we have these cool clear top hats and we have coil splittable pots which means that you have to somehow pull up on these pots and the cool thing is that they have this channel here, they're not flush like the regular top hats they have this channel so you can stick your fingers and easily pull up it grips to your finger which is pretty cool so we have bridge volume neck volume bridge tone neck tone and here we have the bridge pickup split you can see i can easily split it neck pickup split and this is the face switch these two have a treble bleed circuit as well and then we have the three-way switch which i notice the washer for it has been put on a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna try to fix it when I open up from the back. Let's measure these. The bridge Pro Bucker 3 is at 842. The Pro Bucker 2 in the neck position is at 773. The middle position is 403. Now let's measure them when split. The Pro Bucker 3 when split. 431. The Pro Bucker 2 in the neck position when split 398 both pickups first split in the Pro Bucker 3 276 split in the Pro Bucker 2 both 207 and the face switch doesn't affect anything, I'm just moving the guitar, that's why the reading changes. Here we go. The good old lock tone bridge that I've seen on almost every Epiphone guitar after 2010 that I've reviewed. We know it, we love it, individual saddles held in place by a single spring, lock to these struts that you can adjust by a screwdriver or a thumb wheel and it's metric. Here's what the Epiphone lock tone tailpiece looks like, logo on the back. Let's talk about the looks for a little bit. We have a single ply binding, two piece figured maple veneer and this gorgeous cafe latte fade finish with a polyurethane finish on top of it. I like it, it's pretty cool and I definitely like the clear top hats. No pick guard, no poker chip, nothing to get in the way of this beautiful cafe latte fade finish. Then there's the mahogany neck with a set neck construction and gorgeous ebony fingerboard to complement the finish. The neck has a little bit lighter in color binding with black side dot inlays, medium jumbo frets, 12 inch radius and trapezoid perloid inlays. I see some pretty cool swirl patterns in these perloid inlays that are pretty well chosen for this particular fingerboard. In fact the only problem that I seem to find with this particular guitar that I see a little bit of glue residue around the edges of the frets. You can easily clean that off though, so it's just something I noticed, not a big problem. Seriously, I couldn't find any major flaws with this guitar. Then we have the Graftec New Bone Nut. Seems to be the right height, cut properly, not perfectly flush with the binding of the neck, but a good job nonetheless. The Kalamazoo headstock, which a viewer pointed out to me that Epiphone were using way back in the past in the Kalamazoo factory and they were reintroduced for the Inspired by Gibson collection. This happened after the 2020 NAMM show. The headstock features the Les Paul gold silk screen. A black veneer glued to the mahogany neck. The Epiphone Perloid logo and Grover automatic locking tuners. Here's what the cavity for the truss rod looks like. A two-way adjustable truss rod in it. And this is the typical Epiphone bell two-ply 
3 screws, nothing written on it, I think it's a pretty good look for the modern with nothing on it like that. The nut is exactly 43mm wide or 1.69 inch. The 12th fret is at 53.5mm or 2.10 inches. Thickness of the first fret 20.6mm but remember this is an asymmetrical neck profile so it feels a little bit thicker towards the low strings. The 12th fret is at 22.8mm or 0.89 inch. This is a full thickness less pole body at 49mm or 1.92. 12 inch radius or 305 millimeters as it should be for a last pole. Here's what the asymmetrical slim taper neck profile looks like. It is a combination of two neck profiles, C shape for the high strings or the thin strings, call them as you like, and it's U shaped giving you more support for the low strings here. Combining those two neck profiles gives you more support for your thumb for the low strings and easier roll when you're playing on the high strings. That is why it is called asymmetrical. On to the neck and particularly the neck joint with this huge access cutaway here. Basically this is an extension to the normal cutaway that all Les Pauls have here giving you better higher fret access and I'm gonna show you the difference between the back of this and the Gibson Les Paul Custom for example which is also full thickness. Check out the boxy neck joint of a regular Gibson Les Paul Custom. It doesn't have a cutaway here, it has the binding for the back where this is cut allowing your hand not to bump on this nasty edge over here. I'm gonna try and give you guys a better understanding of the materials used for guitars and the way they are constructed, for example the Epiphone versus the Gibson Les Paul Custom. First of all, the Gibson has a much higher grade of mahogany selected for its construction. Wood comes in different grades of quality and is specially selected for the more expensive instruments. After all, it's $600 versus $6,000 for the Gibson. Then there's the construction itself. Gibson uses a single piece of mahogany for the body. Epiphone glues multiple pieces of mahogany. Remember, it has a seam line here. This way, they can use the wood material much more efficient. They don't have to cut a huge piece of mahogany and discard of the extra pieces. Then there are the necks. The Gibson one is made out of a single piece of mahogany. The entire neck including the neck heel is one big chunk of mahogany. Only the wings of the headstock are glued in here to the side. Which means that for Gibson, in order to get a neck made out of a single piece of wood that is angled like this, they have to cut from a block this big, discarding the extra pieces of wood. Just to get this thin piece of mahogany. But that would be a huge waste of material when you're making so many guitars as the Epiphone. So the way Epiphone does things is for this particular guitar they cut one piece of mahogany for the neck. They glued a separate piece for the neck heel. It's glued into the neck, this way they don't have to cut from a huge piece of wood losing so much material. They can add it separately. Then there's the angle of the headstock. Remember you don't have to cut from a piece this high to get the headstock. It is glued separately to the neck using a scarf joint here under those two stickers. Do you see the line? The entire headstock is made out of one piece of wood glued to the rest of the neck. This method of construction of the Epiphone neck greatly reduces the cost of materials and the efficiency when used. They can do for example two necks from a single block of mahogany and also cut the headstock and the neck heel from the same piece of wood that otherwise would have been discarded to do the one piece of the Gibson. Here's the back of the headstock, the QC inspection card sticker, handcrafted in China sticker as well. Good thing these are stickers, you can easily remove them for better look. The serial number 2201 indicates that this was made in January of 2022, 15 is the code for the Qingdao Chinese factory. The Grover automatic locking tuners are a nice addition to this guitar, I'm gonna show you one of these now. I love rear locking tuners and these are pretty good, especially with the tulip button. The entire construction, the tuner, the nut, the washer and the screw weighs exactly 45 grams. Which coincidentally is the same weight of the Grover non-locking tuners on the Gibson Les Paul Custom. This Les Paul with the ultra modern weight relief weighs exactly 7.66 pounds. Now let's hear it.
like the Les Paul Modern. For what it is, for what it costs, it's a good guitar. The big question is, would I buy this over the Les Paul Muse? Which one would I buy? Hmm, let's do a quick comparison to answer that question. Here's our boy, here is the Scarlet Red Muse. The biggest difference between the two is the back construction. The Les Paul Modern has a full thickness body and a high fret axis cutaway near the neck joint. They weigh almost the same, but the Muse is considerably thinner as you can probably see. It also has a belly cutaway here on the top, doesn't have the high fret axis cutaway, but it doesn't need it because this is not a full thickness body, remember? The body of the Modern is much more thicker. The Muse has a custom C neck profile opposed to the asymmetrical of the Modern. The hardware is pretty much the same, but the pickups are not. Aonico Classics versus Probuckers. Boy oh boy, which one should I choose? If I'm gonna be playing standing up, definitely the Muse, because it's a little bit lighter and thinner. But I play sitting down most of the time, so I do prefer the full thickness body of the Modern. I also seem to prefer the split capabilities of the Pro Buckers versus the Aonico Classics on the Muse. Both pickup sets sound great, but the Pro Buckers on the Modern seem to sound better when split and face switched. At least that's my personal preference. Boy, which one to get? Well, here's the thing, they are different enough to justify owning both. For example, I would buy this in the metallic green and this in the Caribbean blue. Why choose? They're affordable enough, I can get both. I can't decide, okay? If you're not like me and you know exactly what you want from a guitar, a full thickness body, with a high fret axis colorway, which is also weight relief, not that heavy as a Les Paul Custom for example. If you like soft sounding rock and roll pickups that can also do some metal when pushed, meaning the Pro Buckers, and if you need all the sound capabilities, the splits, the phase shift, which is by the way one of the best I've ever tried, the phase shift in this really changes the tone. When I use the middle position both pickups in the clean channel of the diesel with the phase switch, it almost sounded like I have a chorus engaged. So it's light, it's comfortable, it's affordable, I couldn't find any major flaws with it. It can sound like three different guitars using the phase switch and the chorus splits. Looks fantastic, it's a cool finish, a unique one. It's a no brainer. What are you still doing watching this video? Go order one and let me know in the comment section which color would you prefer. I'm leaning towards the Caribbean blue but I have to check it in person. See ya!